Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with Howard University's WHUT. Today we are chatting with Tanya Hilton, Executive Director of Cultural DC. Tanya has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Tanya, for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So DC is, is an amazing cultural landscape. Talk about how cultural DC fits within that landscape. Cultural DC is in the fabric of every community across the Washington area. We fit snugly within every neighborhood, every ward, eight of which that we have in DC, in all that we do because we make space for art. In, in, in contrast to uh, the, uh, the quasi-government institutions, the Smithsonian, all the museums, which are, which are absolutely wonderful, the monuments, which are uh, fantastic and historically very potent, um, some of the public spaces uh, that are beautiful and, and sculpted, right. you are making space for it. You're basically filling in where everybody actually lives. Most definitely. Cultural DC has, for the last 19 years, been engaged in over 300,000 square feet of actual space dedicated to affordable arts use. Be it um, housing for artists, that we've been engaged in um, helping artists live and work in through things like our Monroe Street Arts Walk um, studio spaces that artists have, um, the Mather Arts Studio space that uh, our artists live and work in, um, where we had actually an art gallery, a performing space, as well as over 10 condos that artists had affordably. Um, or through something like the Atlas Performing Arts Center, which um, almost 19 years ago, Cultural DC was responsible for working with an angel funder and with city government and with others to convert a space that sat dormant for almost 25 years into what is now a vibrant performing arts space. Um, and in that H Street corridor, it was one of the first entities that begin to enliven that area and really help that community grow to what you see there now today. And people forget in those days it was it was not a it was not what it is today. It was kind it was, of moribund, if you will. It was moribund. It was it was shabby. There were buildings that, that had not been taken care of for yeah. a long time. And the Performing Arts Center was one of the first entities there that came in and said, "The arts are here for the community." Come in, our doors are open. Enjoy, live, dance with us, sing with us, do things with us. And the community started to grow around it. And that's what we're about, helping create affordable spaces that help build healthy communities. And over and over again, for 19 years, we've done that. I could give you so many examples. And, and the idea of healthy communities it is so textured. We're talking about having people access art of different economic levels coming together, but not being shut out because of financial need. We're also talking about artists being able to stay within this environment and making the environment more hospitable to art. We're also talking about the business environment because when art, where artists are, come businesses, whether, they, whether their art is expressed through yes. uh, restaurants or through uh, public displays in, in, in business buildings or out on the sidewalk, it makes the, the place that we're in actually inhabitable. Most definitely. Gala Hispanic Theater, another Gala example Hispanic Theater. We just had that. Rebecca in yesterday. Right. Um, right up on 14th Street, Cultural DC was involved in working with the Tivoli Group to bring Gala Hispanic Theater to life. And Rebecca is still producing, working with artists and, product, and production companies, bringing so much great work to that community and bringing visitors from all over to see award-winning work there all these years later. And that's the other piece, is sustainable work, sustainable art in those communi communities. They're still there 
and they continue to grow and do. And I think sustainability is as important as creating the art. Well, let's explore that. How do you ensure that, because funding is always an issue, how do you ensure that what you do is not an event, but instead is a process that can, that can live for a long period of time? I think that there are three things that are important. One is you want to create an environment that's affordable from the beginning. So the spaces have to be spaces where the artists and the community can come to at an affordable level. Um, so we're not talking about retail square footage when we start. Um, at the price level. So we bring uh, the developers that develop the space together with our community leaders um, and our planning groups at our governmental agencies to determine what's an affordable price and, this is and a who real, invests in that. And that's a real business skill. So you're coming in, as you said, you're not, you're not looking to compete at the highest price. So you have to find places that are at the cusp where you can actually afford to come in. Then you have to create the partnership. So there's a business skill in creating the partnership. Yes. And each person will, it will, and each organization will get involved in the partnership if, there are, if they perceive that there are specific benefits that accrue, accrue to them. So if it's a real estate developer that wishes to develop a, a neighborhood, they understand that if that neighborhood is hollow, if it has no soul, that the value of that neighborhood is, is, is never going to come up. So. They're, they're paying attention to that part of the, of the equation, people in government who are trying yeah. to serve citizens. So you are actually creating a deal. That's right. But this deal is not one where you build it and they will come. So the second com component is the community. You have to think and engage the community. Think about what is it that the community needs what is it that the community will resonate to and engage the community in that dialogue right at the beginning? A great example of that is uh, the parks at Walter Reed, which is a development that's just beginning, although it's been many, many years in the planning. And um, last year, as the strategic arts and culture partner to the development team, Heinz, Urban Atlantic, and Trident, Cultural DC through a grant from the Office of Planning that Kresge Foundation awarded for an initiative called Crossing the Street, um, which there were 15 projects in the DC area for this. We were fortunate enough to be awarded one that we launched working at the Walter Reed site, which used to be home to the Walter Reed Army Medical Center for many, many years. Um, in that project, uh, it culminated in over 1,500 people from the community coming out for a family block party. And when I say coming out, they came to the campus because the campus was open to them. And we said, come out, enjoy, see this campus, experience this campus, which is part of your home here in the Georgia Avenue corridor. And why was that important? Because over the next 10 years, that campus is going to change. It's going to be developed into housing for veterans, for seniors, for all sorts of people, for artists. Um, and there's a school that's actually just opened there as part of a 64 acre development. And I could go on and on, but at that block party, there were four artist activations that had been developed over a six to eight month period, working with over 18 community organizations, over 40 local businesses, and the surrounding community, asking them, what do you dream for on this campus as it converts over the next years? What's going to be important to you? And what is it that you want us to remember about what has happened here? And all of that was um, understood in new ways, working with artists and the community, and embraced so that as we move forward in the changes that will happen on that campus, and we begin to build mixed use entities like converting the firehouse and the auto shop into a mixed use artist community, that it embraces what the community wants. They said they want more music. They want places where families can go and kids can do dance and do other things while the parents are there on campus having a coffee and other things like that. They want community meeting spaces. So 
Second ingredient, community from the beginning. So we envision the parks at Walter Reed being a place, all 64 acres, where community will come. It'll be sustained for many years, whatever is developed there, because the community's voice was engaged in the beginning. So how is Cultural DC funded? What is your budget? And how many staff do you have? Oh, wow. How are we funded? We're funded by a combination of the DC Commission on the Arts, local government funding, foundation funding from people like the Kayfritz Foundation and others, individual gifts, and then um, we also have some corporate gifts. And then our budget ranges from uh, 1.1 million to 2 million, and we have a staff of six full-time employees. We have um, four fellows that are very dedicated, and we have four interns, and then we have a community liaison group of volunteers that ranges between 20 and 30 to 40 people. Wow, what, a, what an impact you can have with so few people and, and so many dedicated volunteers as well. Yes. Well, this has been just an, an amazing story. What's next for Cultural DC? What's next for us is to expand the Space for initiative that we have for performing arts in non-traditional spaces with non-traditional partners like Blind Wino and DuPont Underground, um, where we have our performing arts um, organizations producing their work, be it um, uh, in Cabaret Retrust or the Pinky Swear Group. Um, and our 40-foot shipping container that's the mobile art gallery um, going ward by ward with each exhibition and the community immersion and expanding beyond those um, to really create more affordable spaces so that 300,000 square feet will grow by 100 to 200,000 more we envision in the next three to five years with the projects we currently have underway. What a terrific story, Tanya Hilton. Thank you so much for sharing the, the mission and the vision and the work of Cultural DC. And thank you so much for your insights. Thank you. No more deserts. No more art, art deserts. That's right.